Hi folks, welcome back and as always thank you so much for joining. So today we're going to begin a series on candles, candle making, everything candles. And uh, what we're going to begin with of course is the, the, the most popular subject uh, and it's because it's the major component of a candle system and it defines all of the decisions that you're going to make in regards to your candle we're going to begin with wax. So I have my whiteboard and I have uh, my notes here and uh, we're going to uh, drill down and we're going to uh, look at the science of wax and then we're going to uh, discuss um, the tricks, the industry secrets and how we can use our chosen wax to make a beautiful and safe candle okay so let's get started okay so to begin let's uh let's ask the question what is wax well wax is the fuel and it's what uh, supports the flame of the candle okay so well what is a fuel well a fuel can be a hydrocarbon and in this case uh, that's what we're working with here we're working with a, a hydrocarbon chain of uh, repeat units and I've drawn here rather neatly uh, a small diagram of what a hydrocarbon chain would look like. Uh, we have two carbon atoms and they have bound to them hydrogen atoms and this continues on until we get to 24 the hydrocarbon chain length of paraffin is refined to be about 24 and uh, the hydrocarbon chain length of soy and beeswax is hydrogenated to be a chain length of about 22. So next what we're going to ask is well how is wax made and uh, paraffin and natural waxes are made differently and we're going to talk a little bit about that. How wax is made. All right. Well, as I said before, uh, different um, manufacturing processes. Now, paraffin um, is actually, it's a waste product from oil refineries. Now, back before we discovered paraffin's use in candles, they used to throw it away. It was a problem for them. And, um, now it's being used for candles. Now I want to talk a little bit about paraffin in particular because it's um, it's rather nasty stuff, believe it or not. Um, it's uh, it's the bottom of the pot, and right below uh, above it is the diesel. Now, diesel is an environmental disaster, but we still use it as a fuel because there is simply no alternative yet. So. Paraffin is waste from oil refinery. It contains toxins. As a matter of fact, it contains 11 of them, and two of them are considered excess cancer risks. Uh, not to mention the soot or the carbon. There's plenty of soot, and that is also very damaging to the environment. And uh, when you burn a candle, a paraffin candle, inside your house, it is actually lowering the air quality in your home, not to mention getting on absolutely everything. Now if it gets on stuff, what do you do? Well, for paraffin, you call a pro. Uh, it's going to take uh, a lot of uh, nasty chemicals to get rid of that stuff. Okay, now so let's move to soy and other natural waxes. Now I have here soy because I want to explain to you how it is made. Now beeswax is natural. Uh, we don't have to do anything to it except make a candle with it and enjoy the lovely honey smell. Now for soy is hydrogenated. What that means is they add hydrogen to that to bring up the energy uh, content of soybeans. And so I have a little pot of soy here and we're pumping a little bit of hydrogen into it and I like it. It's natural. It's sustainable. It's non-toxin. It has zero toxins. 
has very little soot. And the best part, well, one of the best parts, it's all good, but uh, clean up, a little soap and water. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the soot. I want to explain to you uh, clearly about the soot dangers of paraffin wax. All right, very quickly, before this gets away from me and we get into the next segment, uh, I mentioned the, uh, the list of uh, toxins, 11 of them, and uh, here they are, uh, formaldehyde, um, uh, a lot of formaldehyde, uh, 3.2 milligrams per gram of paraffin is the amount of formaldehyde that's produced during burning. Uh, acrolein, acetaldehyde, Tuline, benzene, MEK, which is uh, methyl ethyl ketone, uh, naphthalene. Those are um, a list of the uh, really bad ones uh, that are emitted during the burning of a paraffin candle. Uh, natural waxes, none. Okay, now, to hammer down the dangers of using paraffin to making, for making candles, we're going to talk about soot. Soot equals carbon. That's that black smoke that you see wafting off of your lovely, good smelling candle. Okay. Um, carbon comes in many different sizes and that's determined by the height of the flame. There's a carbon zone and we're going to talk about the flame next. The big stuff you see that is the black smoke. And that's bad. Uh, it gets on everything. It's not particularly great. Uh, the health effects are not as disastrous as the small carbon, the tiny stuff. That enters into what we have, which is our deep lung. That's where the uh, oxygen is taken up for use in the body. I have two size carbons here to illustrate to you. And here is a uh, section of, uh, of your lung, of my lung, okay? As you can see, the large carbon, it will attach to the lung. And of course, now that can get cleaned off with the natural action of the bacilli uh, sweeping the lung. However, the small carbon is small enough that it can enter the air sac and get into the deep lung where there is no way for it to ever come out. Okay, now, um, at this point, hopefully, uh, you're going to pause the video and you're going to go throw away all of your paraffin candles and wax. And we're going to come back and we're going to talk about the flame of a candle because this is the science part of it. This is where the beauty of it is. And uh, the flame is just a wonderful subject all in itself. Okay. The flame, the beautiful part of the candle, at least to me, I'm fascinated uh, with the flame, and many are, we can ponder and just enjoy the warm glow. Uh, and this is going to be a brief look at the candle flame itself, but if you're interested in finding out more, because it is a fascinating subject, well, Michael Faraday, he did a series of lectures, and the, the uh, title of his lectures were The Chemical History of a Candle. And I will include in the description a link where you can uh, read this. It's a free PDF and uh, you can be fascinated as well. It's a great starter for anyone who is interested in uh, science, uh, chemical science. Uh, so it's a great starter. And I highly recommend it everyone you read it. Okay, so... The flame itself, uh, it has several components and I have simplified this uh, a good bit just to point out a couple of the areas of importance to us as candle makers, okay? So when you look at the candle flame, you will see a uh, blue edge and that is uh, the blue flame indicates complete combustion. Now inside the blue part is an orange to yellow and it's the major portion of the flame. Well, that is the carbon zone. That is where carbon is being volatilized. And um, in a perfect flame, that uh, carbon is completely oxidized and 
no carbon is produced once it reaches the top of the flame. Now, that's a perfect flame, and many will argue that, uh, you know, a paraffin candle doesn't soot. Uh, yeah, that's with a perfect flame with zero uh, draft. Uh, it's, it's just never going to happen, I'd say. It's, it's just a dance to justify paraffin. It's, it's nonsense, just, okay. Now, the orange zone is the carbon zone. Now, the edge, very interestingly enough, even on just a small flame, is 1600 C, quite high. And that's what burns up the, uh, the fuel, oxidizes the carbon. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, end the science of it, and we're going to get to melting and making some wax and some candles. Okay. All right. So we're actually coming up on the uh, end of the notes, and then we can uh, begin uh, maybe uh, melting some wax, and uh, we can discuss... Uh, a few things uh, overhead while we're melting wax. Uh, things that I'm going to fill in as I go along. Some of the industry secrets, uh, trips, tricks of the trade, uh, money-saving ideas, uh, and whatever I can come across. But let's go with wax basics now. Okay, so you never want to reuse wax. And the reason is, is because we talked about the hydrocarbon chain. Well, once a wax has been burned, that hydrocarbon chain length is no longer the full length. So uh, used wax has been partially consumed, the energy content is lower, and it will cause problems for you and for your customer. And if you've ever seen a wick that normally stands up begin to fall over for some strange reason, well, it may be because you're using used wax. So always use fresh wax. Okay, now uh, a problem that candle makers will have and a good bit of uh, uh, community help uh, surrounds this very problem and that is uh, shrinkage. They pour their candle in, they say, well, it shrank. Well, uh, the reason for that is the hotter that you pour, the more it's going to shrink. So Poor temperature is uh, very important, and it is not the same as melt temperature. So, okay, so, and then again, there again, the melt versus the poor temperature, and we're going to talk about both of those while we're working overhead. Okay, now, something very, very important, and you may have heard the auto ignition point. Now, this can be uh, any kind of a fuel, and it relates to the temperature gets so high that uh, the, the vapors alone can auto-ignite in the atmosphere without the help of a wick. Um, if it gets close to a spark, uh, a flame, or even uh, an air temperature high enough to cause ignition. Well, so, which also is an, a case for always use a double boiler to melt your wax because the wax is inside the double boiler and even if it is getting very very hot we also have steam rising that is mixing with the the uh, uh, hydrocarbons and uh, we can lower the danger of auto ignition significantly so always use the double boiler and uh, of course the second reason for that is relates to reusing the wax uh, if you direct heat wax, well, you are breaking down those hydrocarbon chains, so use the double boiler. Now, when we're making our candles, we see things in them. Uh, we will see uh, nice, gentle melt pools, and then in some waxes, we will see a very sharp edge. Now, this relates to the wax transition temperatures. So what you want to look for is a low melt wax, always a low melt wax. Uh, unless, of course, it's a pillar. Uh, lower is better. You get the more gentle slope. A high transition temperature will give you a sharp edge. Now, the transition temperature is simply the point between solid and melted. The lower that is, the broader it is, the better for you. Okay, so let's, uh, 
Let's clear the table and we're going to talk as we melt some wax. All right, so I'm actually beginning to heat some wax here. And as you can see, I've got my soy wax in a container and I have that container in another pot filled with water, uh, essentially a double boiler. Now this wax has uh, been in the lab for a long time and I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to turn it just a little bit here. And you can see up here, it's beginning to crumb a bit. This is soy wax, it's a natural wax. And uh, if you see that, that's simply not a concern. Uh, it's the way that it dries and over age, it will get like that. Uh, it's lost some water content. But I wanted to point out uh, melting wax, it's, it's expensive. So uh, here's an industry secret. Here is uh, some soy wax, the same stuff and it's in the flakes and what uh, the large candle makers will do is they won't melt it at all. As a matter of fact, they will simply squish it all together and it will, it's cold in here and it would help if this were warm, but you can actually press this together without melting it at all and this plug can be wicked and inserted into the candle. And if you can imagine, just like this, okay? Poor demonstration, but as you can see, some of it is stuck together. The better you press it. And if you warm it, it'll work better for you. And you can wick this and you don't have to melt it at all. And simply place this into your jar and uh, pour the melted wax around it, a little bit of melted wax, and that will save you a lot of money. So there's a little trick for you here. Don't melt the wax if you don't have to, and uh, use plugs for the bulk of it. So as I'm melting, I'm setting up a couple of things here. Um, the melt temperature of this wax is 140, and I am slowly melting and I'm giving it 136, slightly under its melting temperature. And I've also added the cup to the wax so that I can heat it because I'm going to be using this to pour into the container. And this will help you from making such a mess and for a lot of wax to be building up on that. All right. so. We're completely melted and I've gone a little bit past uh, we're 17 degrees higher than what it takes to melt this wax and I've done this for a reason because I wanted to show you what the wax looks like when it's a little bit too hot. For one it's completely clear but when you look down inside you will actually see movement what looks like movement in the wax there will be ripples things like this so I'm going to let this calm down now so I can show you what it looks like at the correct port temperature. And here's a, another handy little thing about making your plug beforehand. Not only does it save you money from having to heat the wax, but it also you can use it to tab your wick at that time and you can simply center your plug in your glass as you want so you can Stop using the heat gun to stick your wicks to the glass. The plug will do it for you and you center it and uh, now some candle makers will put a little dot there so that they can turn it over and center the tab like that. Um, but the eye is a very uh, accurate device so by eye usually will work just fine. Okay. All right so we're at the uh, Poor temperature that we want. I'm going to uh, make a candle. Now, before I pour, let me discuss just a couple of things. You, uh, you can heat your glass and this will help the wax adhere to the glass. And this is important for a soy wax because the soy wax does like to pull away from glass. So heating it would be great. Uh, this is not heated because I'm going to make 
a, uh, a candle that needs fixing so I can show you how to fix it should the wax pull away from the glass. And there we have it. All right, so what I've made here is a candle and it has a few problems. So we can uh, talk about them just a little bit. As you can see, uh, it this is soy wax. It has pulled away from the glass. Uh, this is the time to do your final touches on your glass or on your candle. Uh, this is also, uh, it has shrank down inside there. And we're going to fill that back up. And also, if you'll notice, it shrank just a little bit and pulled down from the sides here. And we can get rid of just that little bit very easily. Now the best way to do that of course is to put it in an oven at uh, 100 degrees you know leave it for a good long time check on it and when it's done it's done you pull it out you let it uh, cool down and you're good. The second choice and you have to be careful with this is a, uh, a hair dryer or a heat gun and what you'll want to do is you'll want to go around the edge of the glass keep the glass moving so that it doesn't crack on you and then uh, finish it off on the top just like this. All right. And here's how that process would happen. That was abbreviated, but uh, you get the idea. Keep the glass moving and uh, it will take care of the parts that has pulled away from the sides and then you can flatten it nice and flat. And now we just let it cool and it's good to go. All right, so there we have it, the wax, the major component of the candle, the component that um, everybody talks about the most. And uh, we've, uh, we've melted some wax, we've poured it, uh, I have it chilling now and uh, if you have uh, any more questions, uh, well, feel free to uh, leave them in the comments and I try to answer every one. And if you found value in the information that's been presented here and also to make sure that you get the next uh, video that's coming, which is Wix, well, uh, subscribe here. and. Uh, I will put the link to uh, Michael Faraday's book in the description and what you see pop up here is uh, my video on uh, candle testing, how to do it safely. All right. Have a great day. Bye-bye.